Start with a quick assessment of how much of tables you all know. Arna and uh, Mitran have been practicing that as well. So we'll just discuss. I'll just ask you guys some questions to see how much of that you know, and then we'll get get to the actual topic of the class. All right? Yeah. All right. So I will call the names and ask questions, and let's see how quickly you are able to respond to it. Okay. So, uh, Mitran, 12 6 0. 72. Okay, Arna, 11 9 Wait, what do you say? 11 9 0. Oh, 9 9. Okay, she was so, 8 6 0. 48. Okay, she was so, 12 9 0. One zero eight. Yeah, one zero eight. Okay. So see, uh, I'll tell you what happens is like when when I was small like you guys, knowing tables was a must and there was no calculator. Okay. Nowadays I know you guys are given the the the. Yeah, we're allowed to. Yeah, we're allowed to, to use calculator. calculator, but I I don't prescribe that because. I strongly believe that our brains are much more stronger, much more powerful than a calculator. Okay? So, it's just a matter of how much you are using it. So, that's why, I mean, what you guys do in the school is fine. I will not probably care about it. But at least, with respect to what we do in the class, I would want you guys to do more of mind maths and do things by yourself rather than relying on the calculator. Okay? So, so let me ask some more questions. Nine nine zero. See what's up. Seventy two. Nine nine zero. Eighty one. Eighty one. Yeah. Arna. Twelve six zero. Sorry, I was seventy two. Okay. Mitran. Twelve nine. Twelve no. Uh, nine seven zero. Sixty three. Okay. All right, so fine. And this was like a quick uh, two minute thing that I do to kind of make sure that everybody gets warmed up and then we'll start the class. So, our uh, message to all of you is that yes, you guys know tables, but make sure that you are spending that five minutes every day to kind of brush up the tables, okay? And you should be able to answer or respond to the table related questions and in less than half a second. It should come naturally. If somebody asks me 13 6, I should say 78. Without even thinking about it. Okay? Alright. So, uh, Shivatsav and Arna, I would request you guys to be on, on video because I'm not recording it here. Okay? I'm recording on, my, on an iPad. So, even if you don't want to show your face on the video, it will not come on the video. Okay? It's okay. You can be on video here. Okay? I'm not recording as you can see on this Google Meet. My Oh, okay, not a problem. Yeah. So today, uh, no, uh, what we want to learn is called probability. Okay. Okay. Have you guys learned it already? Yeah, I I have learned it since the beginning of the school year. Okay. All right. So let's let's see how much we know. Okay. okay. So so again, there are things that you would be knowing. There are things that would be new to you. Any which way, we'll revise that. Okay. So when you talk about probability, okay, let's let's look at a coin. If you toss the coin, whether it be a head or a tail, that would be a fifty percent chance. It'll be a, it can it can be a head or it can be a tail, right? When you toss, you don't know what the result would be. So it could turn out to be a head or it could turn out to be a tail, depending on your luck, right? So. It could be a head or it could be a tail, depends on, there is a 50-50 chance. So, there are only two options, head or tail, and whether it's head or whether it's tail, one out of two. So, there are two chances that could happen, either head or tail. Is it a head? That could be one out of two. Is it a tail? It will be 1 out of 2. That is called probability. Now let's look at the dice. If you guys have played Ludo, right? 
-hmm. you would have seen one, two, three, four, up to six written, right? There are six numbers that can come when you throw a dice. Mm -hmm. So, one can come, two can come, three can come, four can come, five can come, six come, six can come. So, what are the total number of chances or total number of options that you have is six. Mm -hmm. Which number will come? Any number. Any number can come, right? And every number has equal probability or equal chance. So, if any number will come, the probability of that is called 1 by 1 out of 6 or 1 by 6. So, that is how we relate. So, now let's look at other scenario. Let's say, where, where did the, this one go? Okay. The dry eraser. Oh, okay. Here. Alright. So now let's look at a bag. So today, again, we are talking about the probability more from a concept point of view. Okay. So let's say you have a bag. Okay. A, a bag where you have three apples, two oranges, and five bananas. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah? Okay. So you have a bag which has three apples, two oranges, and five bananas. Okay? That means in total you have three plus two plus five. Ten fruits. Okay? Okay. You are randomly picking up one fruit from the basket. Are you placing it or not placing it? I'm saying you are just picking up one fruit from the basket. Just one fruit. Okay. Without using your brain, without trying to f figure out whether it's a banana or apple or in. I mean you can get a sense of it by touching it, right? Mm -hmm. I'm saying you are randomly just picking one. What is the chance that it is a banana? What is the probability that's the banana? A banana, I think it will be one half because there are five total bananas in the bag and they're out of one ten. Out of ten. One Say that again? Be one half. One out of ten. One out of ten. Okay, that is one answer. Um, it, will be, it will be five out of ten and, and you can also simplify that to one half. Okay, so let's not go very fast. Let's go slow. I have five bananas, I have three apples and two oranges. Mm -hmm. I just randomly picked one. So total options I have are ten. Yeah. Banana can come five times. Right? So it will be five out of ten. If I keep on picking one after another, right? Banana can come five times. That is five out of ten. Apple can come three times. So, three out of ten. Mm -hmm. So, if you go picking one by one, okay, and don't, don't put it back, okay, you are keeping, you are keeping it outside. So, first time, let's say if you pick banana, that means one option of banana is gone. Now, it will come only to four more times. So, this is how you relate it, okay, that's what I am trying to say. So, if I have to ask, what is the probability of getting a or getting an orange? What is that? Arna, can you tell me? What is the probability of getting a getting an orange? Let me see. If there's two, two oranges are there. Probability of orange getting picked up will be 2 out of 10. So basically we have 10 fruit items and 2 oranges. So 2 out of 10. Only 2 times out of the 10 fruit items you can get orange picked up. Because that's the total number of oranges you can have. You also simplify it to one bit. That, that one I will not really care much about. I will tell you why. Because... If you, <coughs> if you get to this, this is also a right answer. Mm -hmm. 
Now you can always simplify this. Two by ten is one by five. That is that is doable, and that you can always do. But if you stop here, that also is not wrong. So look at look at this as a as a as a as an opportunity to relate the concepts. Let let's see. Okay, let's say we have a class of thirty students. Okay. Out of which fourteen are girls and sixteen are boys. Okay. If one boy is to be picked, uh, one kid has gets picked up from this class. What is the probability of that being a boy, and what is the probability of that being a girl? Huh? Is it a kid, not a boy or a girl? Like. Yeah, I'm saying one one kid gets gets picked up from the class. Uh, what is the probability of a girl getting picked, and a, what is the probability of a boy getting picked? One of two. A little louder, Anna. None. One of two. None. Sorry. There are thirty students or kids in the class. Fourteen are girls, and sixteen are boys. So, if one kid, I did not say boy or girl, one kid gets picked up from the class, what is what is the probability of a boy getting picked versus a girl getting picked? Mitra, mm. <clears throat> can you? Um. So, for probably for girls would be fourteen out of thirty, and the boys would be sixteen out of thirty. Yeah. So, so this is this is again. I I'm I'm not trying to trick you guys. It's very simple. Okay. So there are thirty students in a class. Fourteen. Boy, fourteen girls and sixteen boys. So, a uh, probability of a girl getting picked is fourteen out of thirty. So fourteen times a girl will get picked up out of thirty times because that that's the that's the you know, number. Similarly, since there are sixteen boys, so the possibility of a boy getting picked up is sixteen by thirty. So again, today I am not going to do any maths. Okay, I just I will keep on repeating myself to ensure that we understand the concepts behind probability. So if you look at probability, it is it is still an estimation technique. It tells you what is the possibility, what is the chance, right? Let's say. I start. Okay, let's let's give an example that will that you guys will find more re relatable. So let's say you have five chapters, five chapters in a subject. Okay, and you get went for the exam. Out of five chapters, you only studied two chapters. Okay, your whole syllabus was five chapters. You studied only two chapters. So, what is the possibility of you getting a full score, or what is the probability of you getting full score in the test? You get forty percent. I'm sorry. Two out of five. Correct. Somebody joined with the name Navya. Okay. Um, may I know who is Navya? Yeah, please drop off. Oh, wait, Arna, I think I know you. Yeah. Do you Sorry, know, do you know me as a teacher first? No. No. Sorry. Then then probably you're in the wrong class. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. No problem.
All right. So, uh, what I was saying? So, I was saying that you, let's say in an exam, you had to study five chapters. You studied only two. So, what is the possibility or probability of you scoring a full, full you, score? You get two out of five, which is also 40%, which means so, you failed. Right. No, so, for, see, this is how. I don't know whether they'll be asking questions from all the chapters or they'll be focusing only on one or two chapters. So, if I'm being optimistic, I will I'll study only two chapters and hope or pray that you no, know, they ask questions only from those chapters that I've studied. So then you are saying, if I study only two chapters out of five, only two out of five, this is my probability to get a hundred percent. Teacher gets generous with me and asks me questions only from those two chapters, I'll get hundred percent, even if I studied only two chapters, right? So this is, when you look at probability, this just talks about the chance, okay? So, so again, we, we will talk about the, the, the basic probability, we will talk about the, the sequential probability also, okay? And we will we'll learn the maths around it, but in today's class, I want you guys to, I want to inject the probability concept deep in your mind so that probability as a topic doesn't sound something very, you know, uh, unknown to you guys, yeah? All right, so now, Let's, let's look at a real life scenario, okay? So, let's say you went to see a doctor, okay? And, and doctor is suspecting that there, there could be a viral infection, it could be a flu, it could be just, just a runny nose, temperature, no? Temperature fluctuation. So, there is... Three different types of things. Three, three different types of things. Okay. okay. And doctor doesn't want to do test and still prescribe you medicine. What is the possibility or probability of that medicine working for you? So I would I would say there would be a thirty three point three percent chance. Right, so that's what I was coming to. So, when there are multiple options and you know, let's say, I was talking about, there are three possible reasons for the illness, okay? For illness, okay? And, and the doctor is just trying to do some guesswork and prescribe you some medicine. The chance is one out of three. This probability you can also represent in percentage. That's what I was trying to come to. Okay. So now let's go back to the other examples. When you are looking at the, the scenario when we are tossing the coin, okay, whether it's a head or a tail, that is one out of two. And we can always say one out of two is how many percentage? It's fifty percent. Yeah. So you don't have to memorize this. If you get the probability value, okay, one out of two, you just multiply that by hundred, and that will be a percentage. Okay. So here, one by two is fifty percent. If if you are looking at the the, the scenario for dice, okay, three, and then we have four, five, six. If somebody says, what is the possibility of getting a 2 when you throw the dice? 1 out of 6. 1 out of 6. You can also say 1 out of 6 as probability or you can say this is 1 out of 6 into 100. That will be like 15 point some percentage. Okay? Mm -hmm. You can always say that. So probability is something that you can represent as a fraction like this. Or you can repaint that as a percentage. Okay. So this is where let me let me just take a pause. What else have you learned? I mean I heard Mitran 
that he has learned probability in the initial class. So tell me what else you, you have learned in the class apart from this. What else we learned? We learned about intro to algebra. We learned. And no, with respect to probability, I'm saying. Okay. We have a learning class about me about probability. Uh huh. So I did learn about the other previous stuff you were talking about in probability, and I also learned about there's this like probability thing that where you like. The like there's like this replace and do not replace right. method. Right. That's what I learned. Okay. So uh, so again, but I, I forgot your name. Oh Sri Watson. Sri Watson. A very nice name, interesting name. It'll take a little bit of time for me to remember that. So Sri Watson, what what have you learned about probability so far? Apart from what we just touched upon. In my school? Yeah. Last year, okay. So, no, what I'm saying is because you no, know, there are different flavors of it. I just want to make sure that I cover all the flavors. I mean, there's there's more maths around it, which I'm going to talk about. So, Arna, uh, do you want to share what if you have learned probability in the class before and what else they have taught so far? Uh, we were going to learn it like this, like next week. Oh, okay, okay. So then, the next class when we talk about the the other concepts of probability, that will that will make it comprehensive enough. So don't don't worry about that. Because of what, what I was planning was, when I'm teaching you as probability, I will make sure that I teach you probability to an extent, this will be useful for you, even for your SAT, okay? So whatever comes in the ninth and 10th grade, all the uh, topics or the, you know, the subtopics within probability, I'll cover that in the next class, okay? okay. So that way, when you, when you go to the next grade or next level, you can relate the concepts, okay? So there's another fla flavor of probability that we have to understand, okay? Now let's look at another situation. Let's look at the first scenario that we were talking about, that we have a bag with three oranges, two, let's say, apple, and Let's say three bananas. Okay. So it's a bag with eight fruits, out of which three are oranges, two are apple, and three are bananas. Okay. If somebody says, I will pick up one fruit, what is the probability of that being a banana? Yeah. Uh, three out of eight. Yeah. Arna, you agree? Yeah. Mitran, you're fine? Okay. Now, let's look at, let's make it a little complicated. Meaning, the person, what first person picks up a fruit. Okay. Something gets picked up. Banana, uh, probability of banana is three by eight. For apple, it will be, if, yeah, 2 by 8, and for oranges, it will be 3 by 8 again, yeah? Now, understand that one fruit is picked up, and it is not put back in the bag. So, what we have is now 7, after one fruit is picked up. Then we have seven fruits now. Right? Now, what is the probability of second fruit being banana? I'm keeping the bit, I can't see. So, when we are picking up the first one, the probability of banana is 3 by 8, apple is 2 by 8. Mm -hmm. Orange is 3 by 8. Okay. Imagine the situation when first fruit is picked up mm -hmm. and you keep it aside. Oh, wait, 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 the other one be 2 8. So it will not be 2 8. Right. Because 
one by, let's say if the first one was banana, what is the possibility of second being a banana? That is now two out of seven because one <laughs> fruit is already gone. Yeah? So both can change. Both can change. And if let's say the first one was apple, then the probability for banana will change. Probability for oranges will change also again. So let's again. I am not going to the, to the mathematical part of it. Okay, I am still telling you guys the concept level stuff. So let's say this is the bag. Okay, you have three apples, two bananas. Okay. I know I'm not drawing it like a banana, but that's okay. That's I'm trying to keep it. Okay. So when you are picking up first fruit, okay, apples probability is three by eight, banana is two by eight, and orange is also three by eight. Okay. Now imagine you picked up the fruit. You picked up one fruit. Okay, one fruit you picked up and took it out. Now what you have is not eight. You have seven. If the first one is banana, okay, the first one that you took out is banana. Then what? What we have here? Banana was two, so one got picked up. So it's only one. Mm -hmm. Apple were three, so all are there because banana got picked up. And oranges were three. That also is as is because banana got picked up. Then your second probability, second when you are picking the second fruit, what is the probability for banana? One by seven. What is the probability for apple? Three by seven. What is the probability for three orange? Seven. Three by seven. Oh, yes. so you you have to always look at. These are related probability, okay? Meaning, or or you can call them cumulative probability. So, you will not get a question as simple as saying, okay, fine, you have this many fruits, pick up one. What is the probability? That is the simplest of the concept. People will ask you, or in the city they will ask, if what is the probability of first two fruits being this and this? And that is where you will have to apply the maths for finding it. So you'll, you'll find the probability for this level and then for this one and multiply them. Okay. So I'll explain the concept in more detail. Okay. So I will, I will kind of break it down into concept and explain you guys why the multiplication comes to play. Why not division? Why not addition? Why not subtraction? Right. So I'll explain that so that you can relate it and then you can solve it. So before I move forward, what questions you have on this one? Any questions you have, sir? Uh, Arna? Will the SAT trick you on probability also? Yes, they will. So, what what will happen in SAT, okay? They don't give you simple questions like, okay, this is this one, do it now. They will give you like a, they will give you word problems or context based problems. Meaning, they will give you a 3 4 line. Which, from which you have to dig the problem out, understand what they are asking, and then you try solving it. Let me give you guys an example, okay? Not related probability, something else, okay? Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. You observe and uh, Arna? Oh. So, what Mitran was asking was, do they ask you trick questions in SAT exam? And the answer is yes. Okay. Let me give you an example, okay? It's not related to probability, but let me give a name. Let's say Sivatsar, okay? He's the new uh, student in the class, so I'm I'm using his name. So Sivatsar age is one fifth of 
his father's age. Okay? And his father is is four years elder to his mom. Okay? Sivasad mom is ten times elder than she was the youngest youngest sibling okay and she was the youngest sibling is 3 year old find out she was the age yeah and again I don't know anybody's age. I'm just, just look at this as a question, okay? I, I'm not trying to talk about anybody's age. I would so not. So the that. mother is three, ten times older than the son, youngest sibling. Yes. Okay. So when you look at this question, right? Trust me. If you don't use this formula, Tran. You will freak out. This is the formula I use that is called TRAN. T R A N. Okay? For any and every. Does that say four years. Four, what, does that say four years older? So, okay. So, don't try solving it, okay? I, I will tell you guys what was the reason for giving this sum, okay? Whenever you come across this sum or any sum, it is not going to be straightforward. Okay, this is a formula, put the value, get the answer. It's not going to be that. Okay. So in SAT also they do context-based or word problems actually. Will they mostly trick you on every problem? Not really. Okay. It's, it's a mixed bag. Okay. There are some questions that will be straightforward. That will look stupid, simple enough, and you say, Oh, is this a question that you asked in SAT? and you laugh at it. But at the same time, you'll have some questions which will be which will trick you. Step. Yeah. So here, whenever you come across this kind of a question, right? You have to use this formula tran. This tran is a universal formula that I ask all my students to use. Okay? Let me break it down. Arna, do you remember what is tran? Uh, what? You do, do you remember what is the formula TRAN? A triangle? No, formula called TRAN. T-R-A-N. Let, let me repeat myself. So, uh, I have done that and this is something that I have invented okay, for my students. TRAN stands for T-R-A-N-N. Okay. T stands for trust. Always trust that you can do it. You can solve the problem. You will be able to do it. Okay. Keep that thing in mind always. Okay. And there is one time thing. Okay. Not for every sum. Just keep in your mind that you can solve the problems. Okay. If anybody can do it, you can do it. Then comes R. R stands for read. Read the question again and again and again and again. As many times till you get tired and you get bored. And you start thinking that okay, there's nothing else that I need to know about this question. Okay. So first one was tra uh, T standing uh, for trusting yourself that yes, you can do it. R stands for read. Read the question over and over again. I'll use this formula for solving this problem, okay? The, the tran formula will use for solving this problem, alright? Then, so this is read. A stands for analyze. That is when you bring your brain to task. Or put your brain to task. That once you have read the question, you start thinking, okay. 
now I have read this one, so this is what I know, this is what it means, this is how I can relate and this would be my approach, this is what I know. So at this stage A, analyze, this is when you make yourself ready about the whole approach, say okay this is how I'm going to do it and then N stands for Nike, Nike is just do it, so this is when you do it. So when, by the time you come to this stage, you are very clear about how you are going to solve the problem. Okay, let's apply this formula for solving this problem that we have on the board. Okay, and I will solve it using the Tran formula. So Tran T, I, I trust myself that okay, I can solve it. Okay, now comes the re part. I'm reading it again. Srivastava's age is one fifth of his father's age. I'm reading that question one more time. Srivastava's age is one fifth of his father's age. Okay. So if Srivastava is five, his father is twenty-five. That that's that's a relation I'm drawing here, right? So if Srivastava is ten, then his father is ten to five. Okay. So I'm just trying to draw the relationship. I'm just thinking with. If Srivastava's age is x, his father is 5 times x. Yeah? So I'll read that line again. Srivastava's age is 1 fifth of his father's age. Okay, so Srivastava's age is 1 fifth of father's age. And his father's age is 5 times, times his age. I read that question 3 times in front of you guys. Did I? Okay. So first line, there is nothing new that I'm going to find out. Even if I read 2 more times. Okay? Now, his father is four years elder to his mom. Okay, so see, his father is four years elder to his Srivastava's mom. Okay, so if Srivastava's mom is, let's say something, let's say 30, so Srivastava's dad is 34 years. Okay, mm -hmm. that is how I'm relating it. Okay, so Srivastava's father is four years elder to his mom. Okay, fine. Let me read one more time. His father is four years elder to his mom. Okay, wonderful. So, I can say if Srivastava's mom is Y years, then Srivastava's dad is Y plus four. Yeah. So, first line was Srivastava's age is one fifth of his father's age. So, if Srivastava is X, his father is five X. His father is four years elder to his mom. So, if Srivastava's mom is five years, Srivastava's dad is five plus four. Okay. These two lines we have read. I think there is no doubt now. Okay. Then there is the third line. Srivastava's mom is ten times older than Srivastava's younger sibling. So, Srivastava's mom is ten times elder than Srivastava's younger sibling. Okay. So, fine. Let's say Srivastava's younger sibling is Z. Then Srivastava's mom, mom is 10 times Z. Yeah? Let me read it one more time. Srivastava's mom is 10 times elder than Srivastava's younger sibling. Okay. So, Srivastava's mom is 10 times older than Srivastava's younger sibling. So, Srivastava's younger sibling is Z. His mom is 10 Z. Now, the fourth line says, Srivastava's younger sibling is 3 years old. Find out the age of Srivastava. Okay? Srivastava's younger sibling is 3 years. So now see, last sentence says, Srivastava's younger sibling is 3 years old. Find out Srivastava's age. Now all that we have written here, let's start going upward. One by one. Srivastava's younger sibling is 3 years old. Okay, what is that we know about Srivastava's younger sibling? The only relationship I know is Srivastava's younger sibling is 10 times uh, or Srivastava's mom is 10 times Srivastava's younger sibling's age. Okay, so she is 3 years old. So Srivastava's mom is three, 10 times 3. Okay, so here we found out Srivastava's mom's age. Okay, I will not say... Uh, Srivastava's mom, I'll just say, we, we found mom's age now. Mom's age is 
3 times 10, 30. Okay, so one thing we found already. Now, if I use this information, does it help me anyway? I, I know that Srivastav's dad is 4 years elder to Srivastav's mom. So, since we know the age of mom, if I add 4 into that, I get 34. Daddy's age. So, daddy is 34. Yeah? So, we found just by knowing the sibling's age, just by reading this question again and again, we found mom's age, then we found dad's age also. If we found dad's age, we can find Sivastav's age now. Right? So, dad is 34 and Sivastav's age is one fifth of that. Easy? Yeah, it's 6.8. Yeah? Yeah, it's 2, 1, 6, 34 by 5. Yeah? yeah. So Srivastava is much younger than what I thought. So he has to be 7 years old because he did that division he got 6.8 which is round up to 7. Alright. So we can, we can find that out. I mean, so here what I'm trying to say is this Tran formula. This, this just gives you a, a guiding principle which says how do you approach a problem. You will know, you will know the formulas. You guys are sincere, you have studied something, you know something, you will learn a lot of things in the class. But then when it comes to appearing in the exam, that is where your knowledge gets tested and the approach that you use for solving a problem. I'm not saying that every question that you come across, you have to read it five times. That may not be a good use of the time. But Wherever it needs you to start to read, please do so. Because when you read it again and again, that is when things will become a lot more clearer to you. Use your scratch book for noting down whatever you are reading and interpreting. When you note it down and then when you start going backward from the place where you got some information, you will be able to gradually connect the dots and solve it yeah so that is the trick here i know it was not related to, to probability but it is very important for us to know how to approach any problem for that matter yeah now you might come across a percentage problem you might come across an interest problem you might come across a probability problem geometry problem trigonometry problem pythagorean theorem whatnot exponents whatnot but the question becomes much easier if you read it two, three times. If you just read it once, many of the questions are good enough to get you scared actually. Yeah? Any doubt, any question, any confusion? No. Arna, Srivastav, are you guys able to hear me okay? Follow me well? Yeah. Okay. And whatever you are seeing on the video right now, it's not very much, uh, what you call, visible. But don't worry about that. The, the video that I will upload, that will have a much clearer this thing because you know, that, that I'm recording on the iPad and you will see that. Okay. okay? So today, <clears throat> in today's class, I have done something different. Okay. Because so far it was like, you know, Arna and Mitran were coming in the class or being online. So it was only either online or in person. Okay, if it was in person, it was coming through the iPad. If it was online, we were joining through the, you know, uh, the Chromebook or the you know, laptop and doing it. This time, what I did was I merged both the classes. Okay, some, <clears throat> some of you sometimes come online, sometimes plan to do offline, right? I mean, in, in person. So if we have both the setup in one place, I don't really, I can give you guys more options actually. You can, you can decide whether you want to join online or in person on a given day. Okay. And I don't have to juggle with a lot of things, but, but good thing is the quality of video will be the same as what you have in person. So you'll be able to see it very well. Okay. Now, uh, for Srivatsa, uh, information for you is the way we do the classes is the classes video gets recorded. And I put that on YouTube where you can go and watch it again 
to revise. Okay, some of the things you will be able to understand, some of the things you will not be able to understand. Okay, if you are missing something, you can watch the video again and do the revision. And then, you know, uh, after the class, after Saturday and Sunday class, I I send the assignments. Okay, I don't give a lot of assignments. I give you enough assignments that you can finish in maximum one hour. Right? I hope you are, you guys are not taking more than that. Correct? Right? One hour. Maximum one hour assignment, okay, for a week. But it depends on what class, how many questions are there. Yeah, right. No, I'm, I mean, I'm just trying to make sure that I don't give you guys a lot of questions. Because my my purpose is not to overload you guys with questions. My purpose is to make sure that whatever concept we are learning in the class, you get to practice those concepts enough. And then after that, if you want to do more sums, it's up to you. Mm -hmm. If you don't do and you forget the concepts, we will have the test anyways every month once and and if something that you are not doing well something you have not practiced well you will get to know about it i'll get to know about it and then we can put our focus back on those topics yeah so that is that is what we do uh, shivatsar arna and mitran they come in person you uh, uh, you you'll be joining online that's okay because it will be one class and we will learn from each other right i mean when you have questions you can always ask when when I ask, please respond, participate, engage yourself. Uh, I'm sure you will you will learn things in a, in a much more you know a better way. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that brings us to the end of the class. Uh, I don't want to stress you guys a lot on a weekend in the evening. Go have some fun. Spend some time with family. We'll meet again tomorrow same time. Yeah. 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 And now all good. Okay. All right. See you guys tomorrow. Same time. Bye. Bye. Bye.